folks. A bit of technical amateur YouTubing mistake number one. Make sure your GoPro cameras are charged up because I'm now <laughs> using my iPhone. So, <laughs> but I've got a second GoPro. I'm going to go try go through the settings. Um, yeah, so I'll just quickly go through it. I mean, the main problems that people are having are the uh, left distance left to empty, okay? Yeah, kilometers left to empty for your fuel gauge because when it comes out of the factory, it's factory set and then you've got to go into the menu settings and design it how you want it, okay? It's like every new car these days, apparently. Um, this is my first car with all these gadgets in it. I know a lot of people were getting a bit um, uh, upset about the fact that the, I think it's the lane assist is swerving you in. I've got to tell you, I've never had a problem with it, but that isn't to say there is a problem in some of the other cars um, with the software and need to just be a tweak, but I've never had a problem with it. Um, it actually makes me drive better. So I can't, I, I, I'm not, I'm no technician, but my car's going fine with all the all the uh, safety tech in it. So the problem I had, the only problem I had was the speed limiter. It was just beeping for two kilometers over the speed limit. So I just reset the tolerance and turn the sound off. And that's one of the functions you can do permanently, okay? So the speed display has still come up on the dash as it, the, the cameras recognize it, yep. So just, I'll show you in a minute how to turn that off. Hopefully if my, um, everything works with my GoPro. And uh, yeah, I'll just do a quick tutorial. Like I said, you know, uh, everyone's gonna have problems. Everyone's gonna have adjustment problems, but these are the way the cars are going. Yeah, sure, if it's a software problem, get it looked at. If you think it's a software problem, just talk to Mazda, they'll look at it. Um, the only other problem I had was last night. I think it was a bit, uh, it was like, I had frost all over the window um, and all my cameras went off. So and it had the, the three lights, orange lights came on the dash. That was the first time I've ever had it. And I've done like nearly 7,000 Ks in it. Okay, let's hope this works. Um, Alba's chewing something. Yep. He's found a favourite toy. His stick. Alba. What you want to look, you've got your language. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then you go into maintenance settings. Okay. Some of these are preset, I think. Uh, the engine oil and el air element cleaner were already preset. I put my tyre ones in. I'm going to check them at 50,000 Ks. Hopefully they're still good. And then you go into your um, user. I guess that's if you want to use that. Press end, middle button, which is the dot, and you got your two arrows. This is on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Uh, you got your driving support settings. Well, your traffic sign recognition. Traffic sign display. Now, your speed warning. This is where I went and turned the bloody thing off. Okay, you can have visual only. Okay, you can have visual and audible. Now, when you turn that off, it will, it will, it will stay off. Um, Oh, that's better, I can lean it up on the gum. Uh, amateur hour. So, yeah, so it will stay off. So um, you can have it to suit your own, okay? And that's the best thing about it, okay? Then you've got your, your speed warning. Um, yeah, I just went through that. Warning threshold, 10Ks, 5Ks, 2Ks. Obviously, it's factory set at 2Ks, so it will go berserk. Um, and then traffic sign display enable yeah so that's on your um that's on the dash here and uh with the cameras pick up and i like to have that because i don't know what speed zone i'm in you know because it could drop down to 40 and you don't even know these days sometimes okay so that's the uh traffic sign recognition settings and then so you've got your rear cross traffic alert. Now, you can turn all these off. If you're going on a big trip, you're towing, you want to turn them off, you can. But when you restart the car, these will go back into the factory reset. 
menu is a bit like um, it could be a bit more intuitive that's just my so lane supports the same you can have attention assist emergency lane keeping you can disable all these um, and but like I said they'll go back and to enable um, after you just stop the car so if, you know if it's it's going to give you the shits turn them off but I'm quite happy with it like I said and I don't mean to piss people off who are having troubles but I'm not having troubles with them even the uh, autonomous uh, cruise control I, I think it's great here's your blind spot monitor you can turn that off you're sick of it beeping um, one thing I will add it'd be good to have the, the the noise alerts off and just have visuals but anyway on all Blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, again, same. It's the same, same, all right. What most people ask on our Facebook group pages is, I reckon it's in meter settings, and yeah, I want to customize. Yeah. Top screen items, yeah, so you go, well, I'll just start that again a bit slower. So you go into your meter settings, Customize, you go to your top screen items, and that tells you, okay? So, select item display, so you got, on the left, I've got the outside temperature, center, I've got the speedo, I like to have the digital speedo, and right is your range, which is everyone is looking for these days. So, it, you just press the center button, it'll go, yep, I want the outside, it'll go into the next one, yep, I want the speedo in the middle, and then, that's your range, because I think it's set to clock from memory. You gotta make it your own, you know, you you know, it's and then that will stay. Um, that won't reset at all, which is good. Uh, optional display. Oh, so there's another one I wanted to show you, which was I was really uh, I didn't like it how it dulled the dash during the day because of this light sensitivity. Um, and I'm just gonna sorry get, try and find this is another thing where I think it should be a bit more intuitive um, and I liked it where you can make it here yeah, illumination mode now this is a good one okay turn it to manual all right you turn it to manual and and you can turn it all the way up and that's what I like I like it nice and bright in here so I can see I'm getting old I can't see I'm wearing glasses nearly every day you go to automatic, see how it, it just, it fade that out, and it's not a bad day out there, but it will just fade out. I like that manual. So, that's that one. Uh, body electrical settings. Now, let me have a look at this one. I don't, I, I, oh yeah, your passive. This is good, okay? So, it works out your door lock. You wanna auto unlock, or you wanna do it, you know, so like if you walk near to the car, it'll unlock. But if you don't want that feature, you can turn that off and just press your button, okay? So that's that's a pretty good um, feature. I only found these by accident when I got the car, actually. Um, and then you've got your passive entry and start system. All right, your communication mode, you know, radio on, yep. Or you can have the radio off when you start the car. It's pretty cool. Uh, walk away chime, yep. I've got that enabled, yep. Um, I've also got the, the mod that pulls the windows in. Um, I don't know why Mazda, it cost me a hundred bucks. Uh, easy to install, so when you lock or walk away, uh, the windows go in, the, sorry, the rear view mirrors go in, and then I know it's locked. Um, I think that's a great feature, and it's also good that no one's gonna click your bloody rear view mirrors. You've got your answer back, chime, max, yeah, you can put all your levels in there walk away chime welcome light yet yeah, enabled so you can go into all this. it's pretty i like this bit this is pretty cool uh walk away lock yep yeah, and i've got that enabled so you don't have to press the button you walk away mine does that i walk away with a fob in my pocket and it will beep and then it will beep again and then the rear view mirrors fold in because yeah um that's the that that's basically the I guess the basics of it. Um, I know a lot of people get a lot of questions. Oh, where do I get my distance to empty? Where do I find that? And how do I turn these uh, speed limiter off? And 
things like that. So, and yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to really get back to you on. Um, I can't okay. I'm just going to give you a scan of the car. Um, there's some mods for the trip coming up to our, we only about four weeks to go until we head up to WA and back down the Northern Territory back home, our six weeks journey. So I've got the Nav uh, Overlander, uh, sorry, Garmin Overlander. Um, I haven't played with it as much yet. I think it's pretty good so far. I've used it three times, but not hardcore. I've used the Garmin Explorer on the desktop to plan our WA trip. Mainly I got this is because I wanted to have this on as well as my SatNav, you know, the normal Google ones where we go on the wiki camps and all that, where we're booked in on our trip. But this will give me the trails and I can record them, um, things like that. And it gives me all my pitch, altitude, uh, and, you know, all your campgrounds around the area and it's just a, another second option to have as well as um, the Apple AirPlay basically having that um, where have I got here you can set up your vehicle profile you can attach a rear camera here I haven't got one obviously so oh yeah your ABC this is what I like too so it's got your a, a altimeter barometer and compass your ABC and that's good information to have so if you've got your map on your infotainment wiki camps or Google Maps or whatever it's transferred over to where your destination is I can monitor things on here as well yeah, second option okay um, um, what I like about it too is you can take it off and there you go you're taking it off it's and it charges on there as well plugs in cigarette lighter done and it's pretty durable, um, it, it's pretty tough. I mean, I've got that lease at the moment, so I can adjust it, um, but yeah. Also got the Oricom uh, uh, Bluetooth tire, uh, tire pressure, uh, monitor the tires, temperature. So the yellows are in temperature, white digits are for the pressure, okay? So that's good to have on the open road, especially our trips. Uh, we deflate, inflate, we know what we're at the correct uh, uh, pressure, uh, correct PSI. So that'd be great to have another added luxury. So there are a few added internal features to the um, Project Invictus that I haven't really done much on. But once I get to learn more about the Garmin Overlander, I'll uh, give you a bit of an episode. But it's, it's not hard, but it's pretty in-depth. Like, subscribe. Uh, sorry about the amateur hour on GoPro, but uh, I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm, going, I'm doing some online lessons before we go on our trip. Our trip will, is going to be great. I mean, I'll, I've bought a new MacBook Pro to do Final Cut Pro X on it, which is what I use for video editing. So we're going to have it on the road, so we'll be able to edit when we got service, and I'll be able to upload. Um, hopefully, we're hoping, up, you know, well, we're away six weeks, so we're hoping, you know, an episode a week. Um, um, I was at a friend's place last night and we were mapping out on Wikicamps, uh, and I've put that up now. If you can't find it, uh, a place, and you want to where you are, it has everything there. It's like crowdsourcing. It's really good. It's 13 bucks, one-off payment, and I love it, and I, I've planned the whole trip on it, so that's great. All right, like, subscribe, comment. Ciao. Stay safe. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Where your heart? Is the sun and it shines so as it opens. Yeah, your heart is the sun and it shines as it opens. Where well, your heart is the sun and it shines so as it opens.